Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first gig since playing with the symphony back in 2012 with us? Uh, in the, in Hawaii? Yep. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've seen any. I was trying to track mm -hmm. down, uh, you know, making mm -hmm. sure I'd done my homework. And that was the last time I remember we talked backstage at the uh, Blaisdell Concert Hall in one of the little rooms there. And that was 2012. And I don't think you've been with us since then. So this is very I exciting. Know. This is very, very, I, you know, I have been over, uh, I did, and I'm not quite sure which part of Hawaii, which uh, island I was on, but I did a uh, private event, but mm. not, not there, yeah, so that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I have, but it's not the same, so there we go. <laughs> it's always great because uh, even though I understand there are two shows per night, at this club, at the Blue Note, right? That's right. Uh, and now, have you been there? I, I'm not, you know, I don't know if it's if we, if it's strictly jazz, or they told me it doesn't have to be because I kind of, comp, you know, do a combination of... You will like it because friends. there's all mm -hmm. kinds of different stuff. They have reggae in that thing. They have everybody mm -hmm. from, like, the Yardbirds to the Whalers and everybody in mm -hmm. between. So, no, you're going to fit in perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I saw something right there, and that's why I was confused, because I've done other Blue Notes in, in like uh, in, in Japan and other places, so I was like, okay, I better check this out. I don't want to bring the wrong kind of show in there, but yes, so good. I'm glad you explained that to me. And what are you bringing? That's a great thing for folks. I'm sure they're curious, since your last time here pu publicly mm -hmm. was that gig with the symphony. Kind of fill in people, describe visually what mm -hmm. we're going to be seeing on stage, how big your band is, that sort of thing. Well, I, this time is going to be, uh, when I was in, in there before, in Hawaii before, I was with the symphony, which was great. And, of course, we had the huge, you know, the symphonic uh, instrumentations. But this time, it's going to be a smaller, obviously smaller um, venue. And also, I'm only bringing, I think there'll be four musicians. So I'll have... Um, two, I believe two of my own musicians and one vocalist, and then we will um, hire the other um, uh, local musicians Ooh. for the, the rhythm. What so, an exciting yeah. night for them, huh? Yeah, we're going to be, be using local musicians, so I'm, going, I'm very happy about that. And what about the actual set? Because you have such mm -hmm. a huge catalog of mm -hmm. material. I can't even imagine when you sit there with your pen and you think, man, what do I leave in and what do I leave out? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. And uh, I, what's, what's wonderful is that for the Blue Note this time, I will be doing a lot of my Supreme songs, obviously, but but not a lot <laughs> uh, because I, I really want to bring some of my uh, American songbook type genre songs and uh, so it's going to be really a, a, a not a party 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 up temple show it'll be a half and half so it'll be half really wonderful ballads love songs and then the other half will be obviously a more up up tempo supreme type songs maybe a few maybe a sting song maybe a, maybe even a rolling stones who knows you know i might do something like that i just spoke to bill wyman the other day he has a new um um, to call it uh, a documentary out, and I told him I'm going to be singing one of his songs mm. when I go, come to Hawaii. He says, okay, cool, can I come? <laughs> <laughs> Bill Wyman and the yeah. Rhythm Kings, he has that great. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. Well, I worked with them. I worked with uh, his, his band several times in Europe. I did two different uh, tours with him that were fantastic. I mean, he has only the best musicians that work with him. And that sounds great. Were you actually singing with his band or you guys were doing yeah. like the same? Oh, wow. In the band with no, him. No, no. I was, I was the vocalist. And he, he's very gracious uh, because he's done that with the uh, other singers as well. He's had, it, had them on uh, his set uh, as special guests. So, I mean, I, I did that throughout Europe with him several times, and it was so fun because they are really... But he told me that he no longer really likes to travel so much, so he doesn't go out that often with the Rhythm King. It's very true. I remember back in 2007, I got to see him. They were uh, at the Led Zeppelin show when Zeppelin reunited. They opened. Oh. They were one of the opening acts, and afterwards he had a bunch of people sitting in with him, and I remember meeting him, and he said just what you did, that uh, he doesn't like to, to do that, that kind of heavy-duty yeah. travel. He's, you know, he's a little older than some of us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't realize it. Well, you know, really, he he uh, he was like the oldest one in the in the Rolling Stones. But we're very dear friends, and I, like I say, I always uh, he emails me, let me know what he's doing, what he's up to. He's always writing and things like that, and I am too. You know, I'm a writer. I have a new book coming out. 
Supreme <laughs> Glamour is the book. And this is true. Coming out in uh, September, and actually very curious because what I think it is, it's a great window into the Supremes' history uh, because this is a book that focuses on your onstage wardrobe, correct? Set the scene for this. Yes, it, my my new book, Supreme Glamour, is a coffee table book. And, uh, you know, most people know the Supremes because of their music, but many, many people know us because of our glamorous outfits that we wore on all the various TV shows. Ed Sullivan, you know, the Dean Martin, the Flip Wilson, Sonny and Cher, all of that. Uh, and in England, of course, we, you know, we uh, performed for the royal family. We did a command performance, which was, uh, I think it was Prince Charles and Princess Margaret and the, the Queen Mother. So a lot of those gowns, yes, are in, in this particular book. So it's a book, it's a pic- picture book uh, with lots of pictures of the gowns. But it also has sort of like an overview in terms of the text. So it's not just a, not just photographs. It has text a historical kind of text in it. So I'm, re- I'm really quite proud, you know. Uh, it's it's my, what, uh, fourth book? Well, actually my third book that I've, I've written. And I'm just very proud to, to have that along with my singing. So I still sing and I still write. And I'm taking acting classes. I want to start that as well. Um, so at 75 years old, I'm still very active, even though I'm a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this this traveling is not as fun as it used to be because, you know, the security you got to go through. Right, right. Uh, the world has totally, yeah. totally changed in the travel. But but let's dial back to the book again, uh, Supreme Glamour, because you said something really cool in there. You talked about that command performance with the, with the queen. Mm-hmm. Bring us back to that and, and again, focusing on uh, that event and, like, how you had to get all gussied up and what you remember about that. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Well, I, I, first of all, let me say that the, my book, Supreme Glamour, is about all of the different uh, places we performed and the wonderful um, uh, royalties that we performed throughout the world because we did some uh, command performance for um, the, the, the future king of Sweden. He's his older sister, the prince. Princess used to drag him to our shows, and he was too young then. <laughs> but he's the king now. He's the actually king, right? <laughs> Who knew? But anyway, so the, one of the biggest ones we did was in London, England, at the Palladium, and uh, it was the Queen actually didn't come that particular time. I'm not sure why. I do know that uh, we at the end of the show, after the show, we had to stand in the in the in the line, receiving line, and. You know, we had these beautiful gowns on. A picture is in my book with us greeting the Queen Mother, the Queen's mom. Wow. Uh, and then Princess Margaret was there, you know, the naughty princess. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I have pictures uh, and Princess Anne. So I have I have people, you know, all those people in there. And it was just for us, you know, we were still very young, uh, I think, just just uh, maybe 25, 26, I'm not quite sure how old we were at the point at that time. But, you know, this was great. I mean, how many people can say they actually met the royal family? And all dressed up uh, like that, too. And that, is that, mm-hmm. Were those outfits ones, did you pick out what you were going to wear that day, or did you have, like, a guide in the band? who Like, how did that kind of thing come to be? Oh, well, I, I know we, the three of us always uh, were uh, responsible for what we wore. Uh, except for the very first time at the Copacabana. That was like a travesty. Um, <laughs> when, and I think after, because our, our, our what you call them, um, uh, not role models, but our chaperones would, you know, kind of plan what we were going to wear. And we got on stage and all the fake flowers started itching us and scratching us. And we just, <laughs> when we came off, we like tore the flowers off the dress. By the way, that's on the cover of one of our famous albums, Supremes at the Copa. The the pictures of those gowns, they have that in the book, too. But those were the worst. <laughs> After that, we kind of decided we wanted to you definitely choose whatever we wore. And we were always in control of, 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 you know, our look and what we wanted to wear. 
you know, on that note of the uh, the clothing, and you were talking about that uh, that one outfit, the cover of the Return of the Magnificent Seven. You're standing in a field. Do you remember that one? <laughs> I, are you kidding? That was beautiful because on one side was the glamorous. We had gowns on, right? And, and the four tops had the beautiful suits. And on the back side, I think it was we had because uh, everyone was wearing leather back in those days. You know, in the seventies. So we were in our bell bottoms and leather outfits. Uh, I, mine was so small. I must have been about size five. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't even get my arm into it now, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we. so that was a beautiful album cover. Well, back in those days, it's not like the day, you know, you have the CD covers, whatever. They're so small, you can't see anything. We, I, I remember buying re- albums because of the album cover. Right, me too. So, me too. Yeah, so... Yeah, that was the beauty of it. That was one of my favorite album covers. I like it, too. I just think it's great to look at today, like you said. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. just it's incongruous to today's world, and and it's very natural, too. I like the the outdoor scene. You said something cool about sort of referencing whether you still have some of this stuff, and it made me wonder how many, because I know you've done a lot with the outfits through the years. They've been in different kinds of, uh, like I imagine some are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, do you have a bunch in your own possession still? Well, it's my exhibit, yes. It's my exhibit, so it tours. Uh, in fact, I just got an email today from uh, someone, a French man, who is doing something there in Paris, and they want to see if we would, if I would uh, allow them to exhibit it there. So yes, it it, it travels around. My my gown collection travels, um, and 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 so it's really great. I have about well maybe fifty more gowns. Some of them are so delicate that they can't travel, they can't tour. You know. Uh, like they're getting old. <laughs> well, that's part of the so, thing. Uh, you have history. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So, but yeah, they still trap. They still. It. Um. Uh, the gown collection has been has appeared at many different museums. Uh, one, the last one uh, was the LBJ Museum in Austin, Texas. In fact, I think it's still there. Um, and as I mentioned, the Victorian Albums Museum in uh, in London. So it's, they tour a lot. They tour a lot. But I, 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 don't, I would like to find a permanent home for them because right. uh, they become very fragile, especially after, you know, 40 years or well, so. You mentioned LBJ, and you also talked about some of the kind of, like, really command occasions that you've had to be in. Mm-hmm. What are some of the other presidents that you've gotten to interact with? Um, well, a future president was uh, <laughs> Hubert Humphrey. We actually endorsed him back, I think it was 1968. And um, um, of course, we you know hung up. We did. I did the uh, Millennium with the the Clintons at, uh, um, in Washington. So we we performed there with lots of people. Tom Jones, the whole thing. So we were there for that Millennium performance, which was really spectacular. But uh, yeah, that's some of the things that are in the book. In my book, it's a lot of different events and and places. And I think that's what's so great because today. The artists are doing things that we did in the '60s. You know? Oh, well, you guys helped. You guys wrote the book on. Now, that's the other we, side of it. I mean, you you didn't mm-hmm. just you didn't just showcase how to do things visually with this incredible part that we've been discussing in your new book, which shows it off. But the same with with the musical side. And when I was thinking yeah. about your life as an individual, aside really as it connects to to the Supremes, but really as an individual, when you first met one of your future partners, Florence Ballard, you were in elementary school in Detroit. I've been curious how much mm-hmm. had music Music already been a part of your life, and can you talk about that kind of development right there? Uh, sure, I'd love to talk about uh, our early beginnings because it, we were all influenced. I think if people around the world were influenced by the same type of people. I, when I speak to some of the uh, other groups, you know, they grew up listening to uh, Chuck Berry. You know, I spoke to Little Richard a couple of weeks ago, but everyone, you know, that I know, a black and white artist, have all, they all have the same influences because rock and roll was still so very new, and we were that group of, of, of young people who were screaming and yelling, you know, back then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were, we were the ones. And uh, so what really happened for us was that we were influenced by those early pioneers. 
especially little little Richard, you know, especially Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, uh, and then of course you know you had the, the Everly Brothers. I mean, we were we were all sort of listening to the music on radio when radio was really great. I, I don't know about down there with you, <laughs> but you know the music. It was the music. It was the new. A DJ could actually make or break a you know a record. So uh, we grew up in that in that era when when radio really plays the music of the day. And I guess they are today, but they're playing, you know, different kind of music for for the young teenagers today. So that's why it was kind of cool that uh, Mr. Gordy, Barry uh, Gordy and uh, Motown called, had a sign above their door saying uh, the sound of young America. So, and it, it was. So that's kind of what we grew up in back Flo, Diane, and I all were in what eighth eighth grade, I think, around seventh or eighth grade when we first met, and we just started singing because we enjoyed, you know, the music. Not not so much to become a star or or famous, but just because we just enjoyed singing. You mentioned Barry. Do you still remember? And it's such a funny story because I read Smokey Robinson arranges this a cappella audition for Barry Gordy, and lo and behold even though that must have been so nerve-wracking for you, he's like, he says, you guys should go back to school. <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> well, the thing there was pretty much, we were young girls. We were like teenage girls in high school. So the, the, I didn't realize this at the time. I don't think the others did as, as well. But, you know, we were young girls. And so the, this record company didn't want to have four teenage girls running around if somebody <laughs> happened to get knocked up, you know. So that way, I think I believe it was never said, but I believe that he only said because we really were good. I mean, we really, really were excellent singers. Uh, but because we were so young, they didn't want to have anything to to do, and they were still a young company as well. So um, sounds like you can kind of respect where they were coming from, is what it sounds oh, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, and they brushed us off in that way. But you know what? We were not the kind of girls that were going to uh, stop school anyway. I mean, our parents would have killed us, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> for him to say something like that to us, where it was like just ludicrous, but it still made sense, you know. And I, I understand it now. It's like, okay, uh, come back when you're a little older. Uh, <laughs> so that was kind of what that was all about. But you had a lot of but persistence. Had, what I read is you had the persistence, and it led to you frequenting the studio, spending time being there, and eventually working your way into initially doing hand claps, backing vocals for people like Marvin Gaye. I mean, it says a lot about your entire career that that's how things rolled. And, and you're right. The, you're right. The bottom line was that uh, we made them sign us. <laughs> you know what I mean? We we made them see that we really were as good as we we thought we were. Uh, and 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 very. I'm sure there were so many great singers around, you know, at the time. But we did have something very special. The four of us did, and we were four before three. Before there were three of us, uh, you know, we we were just very not only persistent. I think that we just really were good. You know, I mean, we were good. Good. We were a good group, as it proved, as the years and the records and everything has proved out. We really were special. Some of that specialness you talk about in your new book. Again, we're talking with the great Mary Wilson and uh, of the Supremes, and she's got a Supreme Glamour new book, which is dropping in September, which focuses on their incredible fashion statements through the years. But I read it also tells some of the critical stories in there. One of the things that I read you cover in this new book is the story of your 1964 breakthrough hit, Where Did Our Love Go? Can you share some of that critical story, a little preview of the book, if you will? Yes. Well, I tell you, what's really great about uh, our recording uh, history is that we didn't have a lot, we didn't have any hit records until our, I think it was the seventh or eighth release. And that really was disappointing because, you know, we were called the no-hit Supremes. I kind of made that up myself I, because I knew people were talking about us behind our back, backs. As I said, we thought we were really good. And for us not to get a hit record when everyone else who was coming into Motown, like the Marvelettes, like uh, the, 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 you know, Mar Martha and the Vandellas, you know, people, they were coming in and getting hit records. And we were the first girl group. So uh, uh, when finally Holland Dozier Holland, the producers, wrote this record for us, Where Did Our Love Go? And it became number one. Well, 
it not only became number one in 1964, but it kind of changed the music scene forever because we got we had five consecutive number ones after that record. Um, and then I think one or two did not make it to number one, So, but then the next four were consecutive number ones. So, I mean, I don't know how many people can say they had seven or eight consecutive number one records, you know, but we did. Uh, in between, we had two that were not, but <laughs> anyway, it was coming. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was, it was, that record really did change. Uh, it, it, it changed who we were. We were now, you know, international stars. And they did something so unusual with you guys that a phenomenon I was hoping you could possibly explain, because I'm sure it's even more strange to, to people who didn't grow up with it. And that is the Supremes were paired at times with fellow Motown acts, the Temptations for two collaborative albums, and then the Four Tops for, for three records. Kind of explain to folks, like, how did they even approach that to you? Because you can't imagine today that sort of thing happening with two major bands. I think because of the history that we all the bands had and because of how Motown Records itself was set up, um, where we would all, we being all the artists, would, would set, sit in on, on some of the other artists' uh, recording sessions. And if they needed an extra voice or if they needed a hand clap, people would just do it. I remember um, that on that second record, I think, when the love light shines through his eyes, uh, the Four Tops are, and, and two of the uh, Holland brothers were on that recording session. Very few people know about that. Uh, and 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 so later on, when we teamed up with, when we were teamed up with the, the Temptations, it was because Eddie Kendricks and Paul Williams were uh, the group that started singing, and they laid, they became the Temptations, two members of the Temptations. But in the beginning, the Primes, they were the ones who started the Primettes how you know as a group so then we went on to become the supremes it's a very sort of intelligence <laughs> the story is kind of I, i've written about it so it's, it's easy if you read it then for me to try to explain no because it. everything's so, interconnected it's great like that the way you're describing yeah yeah so when so when we later on we both became big hits you know the temptation of supremes it was just just a wonderful thing to have the two of us two groups uh start recording together so it was almost like we came back uh together as, as uh, singers. And, and, of course, you mentioned earlier about the Four Tops and the Magnificent Seven. That was also great, you know, because we all kind of started there at Motown. So it was, it was fun. And some great <laughs> stuff with the Four Tops. River Deep, Mountain High. I mean, that was just some great well, memories. I think that was a top five. I think it was a top five. I'm not quite sure how high it went on the charts. But uh, I went to see... Uh, Celine Dion, and, and she opens with that song, or she did open with it, whatever. A lot of people sing it, but, and of course, uh, Tina Turner, Ike and Tina Turner recorded it. But very few people know that we, the, the Four Tops and, and Supremes, had a, a huge hit, a top ten hit on that song. You have had so many hits, been all over the place, and uh, we're so fortunate to have you back in the islands and joining us at this intimate venue, the Blue Note. I really enjoy getting to talk with you, Mary. I hope that this was a fun time for you. Well, no, yes, of course it was. <laughs> it was uh, wonderful. And I can't wait to, to come there and, and perform there and make sure that you make a copy of this so I can keep it in my files. I will do that for you. And <laughs> Are you coming to the show? I mean, I, I, do you think people will come to our show? I'm You're going to have a huge <laughs> night. A lot of people are going to come. I will definitely come and uh, would love to say hi again. I haven't seen you yes. in all these years. We had a great time last time you were in town. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay. So now you make sure you keep me a copy because we talked about some nice, interesting things. Okay. Thank you. I would appreciate it. I, I keep, I keep, I, I'm like a hoarder. I keep things. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Okay. Here, sweetie pie. I'll get you a copy okay. and I'll come say hi at the show. Okay. Okay. Bye. Take care, Mary. Aloha. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Aloha. Aloha. This is Mary Wilson of the Supremes. I have a question for you. Do you know what you are listening to? Hey, this is membership-supportive Hawaii Public Radio, and it was a thrill to be here as a guest with my friend Dave Lawrence. Yeah, but you know what would be a bigger thrill? If you would make a contribution right now. 
and I thank you so much 